This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Kine Avenue Bridge over Cooper River. This is a roadway and bridge improvements project in the city of Camden in Camden County, New Jersey. This is the online public information center meeting, and this comment period for this project will be until the end of this month, which is August 31st. It is Tuesday the 31st. So we welcome and encourage everyone to comment on the project and the information will be at the last slide in this presentation. Up next, I just have just a couple of housekeeping items for you. First and foremost, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Camden County website, which is camdencounty.com slash live. It will also be available on the Stokes Creative Group YouTube channel, which you can see the address there on the screen. And that will be for anyone who was unable to attend today's presentation who would like to review it and provide comments. Again, the comment period will be through Tuesday, August 31st. All of your microphones are muted. We do ask everyone participating tonight to please stay muted and utilize the chat feature for asking questions or comments. You can do so in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see a little chat bubble icon. If you click that, that's the chat box, and that's where you can type in your questions or comments, and I will read them as our presentation goes along. For for this meeting, it will consist of about a 20 to 25 minute presentation, and then we will have a question and answer period. So without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to project manager, Tim Dastis from HNTB. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Like she said, my name is Tim Dastis. I'm actually the deputy project manager for the project, um, but introducing the project team, uh, we have John Kasha. He's the manager of the Office of Project Implementation for the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. Uh, Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, otherwise DVRPC, functions as uh, a metropolitan planning organization, basically taking local aid funds uh, from the DOT and then the federal government and allocates it to different counties uh, that they oversee. Uh, Kevin Bessica is the county engineer uh, for Camden County and is the technical liaison for this project. Uh, we coordinate with the city of Camden, Orion Joyner. He's the municipal engineer for the, for the county, or for the city, rather. And then lastly, myself, Tim Bassis, and Scott Burroughs is our project manager for HNTB, the design consultant. Getting into the project itself, uh, the one thing to touch on is the importance of the, uh, the Kane Avenue Bridge over Cooper River and that. The city of Camden is almost unique in that it's uh, separated from the rest of New Jersey by the Cooper River on the north and the east sides of it. Uh, so really, there were very few access points. State Street, Federal Street, and Baird Boulevard are the three other bridges in this general vicinity that kind of uh, landlock the, uh, the islands, this quote-unquote, of Camden from the rest of the city. So Getting this bridge repaired uh, is important for public safety and, and the fact that it's just a major in and out uh, artery to the, the city of Camden. Uh, today we'll get into just some brief history on the project and get into the specifics really, like why are we working on this project? Uh, you know, we'll get into the bridge replacement, what we're doing with the roadway, touch on some permits and, and stuff like that, but really get into the schedule, some detours, and then we'll open it up to questions for the, for the group here. Uh, here's a little more zoomed in view of the, of the previous slide. Uh, as you can see, the general project limits. Uh, touching on some brief history, this project started in 2017 as a concept development study. HNTB was then brought on at the end of 2019, early 2020, to begin the preliminary and final design phases. Uh, HNTB was going to take the alternative developed and chosen during the concept development phase, really refine it, uh, set the limits, get some environmental documents in place during the preliminary engineering. And then during final design, we'll develop plans, uh, specs, estimate, uh, all that for the project to eventually be bid and, and constructed by a contractor. Um, this section of Keynes Ave, as you can see, is right, over, right off the uh, airport circle of 30, 130, 3870, uh, and spans from North Park Drive to Euclid Avenue to the west. A couple of main drivers for the project. Uh, first, the bridge itself. Uh, it's a, oh, nearing 100 years old. It's a fracture critical structure that's in need of repairs, there's spalling throughout on the concrete, uh, cracking, exposed rebar. Um, so repairs were done in 2014 to address some of the erosion on the riverbed there. Uh, but general, there's deterioration throughout and, and the bridge is in need of replacement. 
the roadway geometry is unique in that to the west of the of the bridge as you head into Camden, there's a steep drop. The general area uh, of the city of Camden right there is quite low lying, which in itself isn't necessarily bad, but the vicinity to the Cooper River uh, in turn with high tides and normal rain events can cause it to wash out and uh, become flooded, but as you can see in that top right picture. Um, that causes inconvenience to the motorists, uh, either having to risk it going through the water, as I've seen, or complete closures and detours. Uh, so we're going to take care of some of these issues by raising the roadway geometry, which we'll get into. So here's a proposed plan uh, that you can see. The, the existing footprint of the, of the project, the curb to curb, the existing multi-use path and the existing sidewalk on the north side, none of that's gonna change. So you're not really seeing a whole lot here, uh, but there will be a new bridge over the Cooper River. We'll be changing the existing two-span structure to a one-span. And uh, as you can see, the Cooper River kind of comes back and encroaches back on the roadway on the north side there. We're gonna be replacing the bulkhead there uh, with a new one as we raise the roadway. This is a small snippet here of the Camden County Link Trail Network. Uh, our goal is to maintain and, and improve upon this network. So as you can see the, in yellow, the existing network uh, will be approved upon by uh, just better signing, better lighting throughout the area. And you can see a future linkage trail here that will connect the Cooper River Trail up to the uh, Gateway Trail to the north. Uh, that's a separate project, not part of this. but. We're in coordination with that group as well to make sure we're all on the same page. A general cross section, like I said, the curb to curb and out to out of the project isn't changing, uh, but we will be doing some roadway improvements, uh, delineating dedicated bike lanes on the outside shoulders there with a small buffer strip between just to separate the bicyclists from active traffic. Uh, this was a request that was uh, asked for us by several bicycle coalitions, and uh, this will help the more serious bicyclists will call them, uh, access the bike lanes versus the multi-use path where you may have more of a mix of uh, walkers and, and bicyclists at the same time. Getting into the profile, as I previously mentioned, uh, the roadway geometry drops significantly as you head west, which is to the leftward direction of, of this slide uh, and, and going into Camden, which you can see where the existing ground caught is. This is your preliminary, this is your main area of where you see a lot of the flooding. Uh, during the high tide events. So the proposed situation raises that side over four feet in some areas, and it'll help with the majority of flooding. Uh, as you get towards Vesper Boulevard, the Veterans Cemetery and these Mediche driveways, we're, we're closer to about a foot of total raise. So the tie-ins to those driveways, will, the impacts will be minor. Uh, and like I said, we're, we're gonna get rid of the majority of the events. Just due to the nature of the area, the low lying, as I mentioned, uh, we can't raise completely above the 100 year floodplain. Uh, that would basically cause Kane Ave to act as a dam. Uh, so, in a major rain event, it would inundate the areas above and below it, flooding out Medis, flooding out the cemetery. So, there will be some ability for the floodwaters to pass through. Uh, the important thing would be that the bridge is going to be above the 100 year flood level, and that'll aid in maintenance costs and uh, overall safety to the to the project area. Looking at the bridge, uh, we had several requests and, and I agree with them to maintain kind of a park entrance feel. Uh, so that'll be maintained in the proposed condition. Uh, you know, we, we wanna make it a new bridge. We can't keep this one up forever. So the new bridge will have a new feel, but it'll also maintain some of the historical elements like architectural details. Uh, balustrades on the four corners and, and, and as these pillar call-outs are shown. And uh, we have hopes to add lighting to those as well, just to mimic uh, the existing look and kind of improve upon what's out there now. Um, and as you can see, again, it's a, the, the center pier and the waterway will be removed uh, as part of the proposed condition. Getting a little more detailed into the bridge, uh, it'll be a steel beam, metalized steel. Uh, the goal of that is to reduce the maintenance cost to the county. Uh, we use the similar approach on the nearby Baird Boulevard uh, to the north. And again, raising that bridge completely above the 100-year flood levels will aid in maintenance costs and, and not have flood out and uh, the need to clean out the area with uh, river debris or whatever it may be. Touching on the environmental permits, uh, we have a lot going on in this 
small little area for a project. You know, we have green acres, we have parks, we have high school fields, and uh, the bridge itself is is uh, on the historic register. Um, so the biggest part of preliminary engineering is getting these permits in place. We want to progress the design so that we can establish the footprint. Here's where we're going to be impacting, whether it's temporary or permanent. And none of these issues can be uh, a deal breaker, but they can be mitigated. And that's the part of preliminary engineering that we're working through and, and uh, one of the most important parts of that phase. Uh, there's also been freshwater mussels and bald eagles common in the vicinity. And again, nothing that we can't overcome, but proper steps have to be in place to mitigate those issues make sure that we're being responsible in the design and the construction of these projects. Getting into the project schedule, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the concept development was completed back in 2017. We initiated the preliminary engineering in early 2020. During that time, we're developing the PPA, the preliminary preferred alternative that was chosen in concept development, uh, get the major design elements refined a bit, uh, made some tweaks here and there and get that footprint established so we can get the permits uh, submitted and approved uh, so that we can progress the design. We had a stakeholder meeting back in June with the local officials, got their opinion, got their, their buy-in, and then trying to incorporate some elements that they, they found to be important to them uh, just to keep everyone on the same page. And, you know, the county doesn't want to come in and just put whatever they want. We want to work with the local government and, and, the, and the community hence the reason for a meeting like this. So as after today's meeting, we'll continue to analyze the input that we receive from uh, both the stakeholders and, and the local community, uh, refine that preliminary design with hopes to submit uh, our preliminary design and permit package in August. Now, that permit review, approval, et cetera, uh, and the funding requirements uh, that are required to progress the project, so to speak, that probably takes a couple of months from what we've been told, and that'll leave us to be starting our final design November of 21. Uh, it takes about a year for us to wrap everything up, and due to the current funding schedule, this construction will start in the year 2024, uh, fiscal year. So it could start at the end of 23, uh, but more likely at the start of 24. Getting into the detour routes, uh, the bridge is a unique type of through girder structure in that you can't take pieces of this bridge out without structurally uh, compromising the rest of the structure. So as a result, it's not, there's no easy way to uh, stage this construction and demolition in, that, in a, an effective way where you could keep a portion of Kane Avenue open. As such, uh, we're gonna have to detour traffic. Uh, one of the things I'd mentioned is due to the fact that the river floods uh, the roadway 15 to 18 times per year, this isn't something that the motorists and the general public is unaware of. This isn't a foreign route. Uh, this is the one that you would often be detoured to. So exiting Camden, you would uh, then use Park Boulevard and, and Kane Ave to access Bear to Admiral Wilson. Now get you right back to the 130 circle. Uh, and alternatively, heading into Camden, uh, the biggest thing here will be the approach signage. You know, I never like to detour a route before you get to the closure. So signing will be key. If, if the motorists do happen to go down Kane Avenue, they'll be detoured down North Park Drive, back to that U-turn by the uh, driving range, and back up Admiral Wilson down to Baird Boulevard to get back to the city of Camden. That wraps up the presentation. Uh, we really thank you for participating and, and joining in. And uh, the most important thing for us is getting comments, uh, seeing how the public feel about it, uh, trying to incorporate those uh, opinions, uh, design suggestions, and, and design elements into our final design. Um, like, I, like, like I said, we really want to make sure that we have the proper outreach and, and inform the public of what's going on. Uh, you know, detouring isn't always the, the most uh, effective thing, but we're, we're believing that's going to take place in 2024, uh, and it, it's not the worst detour that you could do. Uh, it's only about a mile. Uh, it's not going to take a lot of time, and it's something that happens a lot more often than than should. And we believe by bringing these improvements in, we're going to alleviate a lot of the flooding issues and, and overall make the project and, and project area uh, really appealing and uh, a nice project for, for the city of Camden. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Nicole.
Okay, great. Thank you, Tim. So as we said in the beginning of the presentation, what we're going to do is allow a comment period, both now live during our recording, as well as through August 31st for the public. What we have done is created a simple comment form online. All you have to do is point your camera at the QR code on the screen, and it will take you right to the comment form where you can leave your comments and questions for our team. And that will all be incorporated into the report. Again, this recording is going to be available on in two locations, on the Camden County website and on YouTube, which is where maybe you're watching it now on the replay. We have our contact information here if you'd like to directly email us. My information is on the screen. It's npace at stokescg.com. And Tim's information is there, T-D-A-S-T-I-S at hntb.com. And again, now is the time for you to ask your questions. If you would like to use the chat box to ask those questions, we will certainly answer them while we're here. And then we will, again, open it up to uh, the, the people watching on the replay to allow them the time to comment via the comment box through August 31st. So we actually do have a question here in the chat box. It says, how long will the actual construction or detour take once the construction is underway? So start to finish, uh, we're anticipating about 15 months of total construction. Uh, now, that's with the caveat that there's some temporary utility relocations, uh, more importantly, the gas main. Uh, that spans the bridge and the area of utilities that will have to temporarily relocate out of the way so that we can safely operate a crane. Some of that stuff can take place prior to the bridge demolition and, and the road closure and uh, take place offline. So if you talk about start to finish, yeah, it's 15 months, but I think it'll be less than that uh, as from a bridge construction and then subsequently road closure standpoint. Great, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is, will any sewer reconstruction be involved? No, so like we will be raising the roadway significantly. In that case, new inlets will be put in uh, or reset and raised where, where applicable, uh, but the general uh, sewer system won't be. I should mention that here is not a combined sewer system in that, uh, the stormwater uh, will drain, does drain to the river, but the sanitary sewer does not. Uh, that's a, a separate offline system, unlike the unlike other parts of Camden. Great. We'll just continue to wait and see if there are any additional questions in the next few minutes, and. see if any others come up. And if not, we can certainly just stay on hold for a bit and see if anyone else has any questions. So we'll just be hanging out waiting for a bit. And once again, for those of you who are maybe just tuning in, we are presenting tonight the Online Public Information Center for the Kane Avenue Bridge. And again, this information, the meeting, video will be posted on the Camden County website. And again, the, the QR code is here on your screen for you to scan with your phone, and it will take you directly to the Google form where you can provide us with your questions or your comments.
Okay, we have a couple of more questions. Thank you so much for those who are asking. The first question says, how many permits are you anticipating for this project? Uh, I can go back to that slide and that kind of lays out a couple of them. So uh, we have the waterfront development permit, uh, freshwater wetlands permit. We'll work with the Camden County Soil Conservation District to have uh, this uh, plan certified. Uh, not so much a permit, more than a more of a coordination effort. Uh, we've coordinated with SHPO, the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, about the bridge itself and and uh, and the, its its historic significance and the steps to take. Um, the freshwater mussel existence, which has been found, uh, won't require a permit, but coordination and uh, relocation and a mitigation plan, which is in the works. Uh, and then the point of discharge elimination system permit for construction of the stormwater, uh, as in the raising, and uh, that I mentioned on the previous question. We also have some U.S. Army Corps permits, uh, and I believe that's it. Going off the top of my head here. Great, thank you, Tim. And the other question here says. Are any traffic signals or other controls being considered for the trail crossing? So the existing crossing on the western end that connects uh, the Cooper River Trail um, over by Glen, Glen Drive, um, there's an existing curb ramp system there and definitely some crosswalk striping that needs to be replaced. Um, so we won't be having a signal there, but the enhanced lighting will be upgrading from you know, traditional lamps to LEDs, it'll be a bit brighter, and more reflective striping that comes with new striping uh, will make that more visible and, and hence safer. The one on the east side that'll be part of the pub trail that'll connect the Cooper River up to the Gateway Park, uh, I don't believe there's any sort of signal uh, plan there, but again, because uh, that's not an HNTB project, but similarly, uh, there'll be crosswalk striping and, and better lighting to uh, make visibility better in that area. Okay, great. And another question says, how are the climate change impacts being considered in the planning of this bridge and road elevation project? Um, if you want to provide some clarity on that, I'd appreciate it, but I'll speak to water levels and things of that nature. Um, our hydraulic model does take into account uh, anticipated elevations and 100-year uh, flood levels and, and based on U.S. data for that. And once again, for those of you watching on the replay, we are just waiting for additional comments and or questions to come into the chat box. I know you're unable to see them, but we are giving all of our live participants tonight an opportunity to ask questions as they come up. And we do have another question that just came in. It says, have project sea level rise impacts on water level and increased storms gone into the calculation? I don't want to speak to that 
because I, it's quite simply, I, I don't know the answer a hundred percent. Uh, I will consult with my, my drainage and, uh, environmental expert that we have on our team here. And, uh, I can reach back out to you and provide that answer. And if you'd like us to get back to you on that question, the easiest thing to do would be to send a private message to me with your email address so I can get the proper answer for you on that question. And that way we have a way to reach back out to you. Any additional comments or questions? We'll just wait another few minutes and see if any others pop in. Okay, before we sign off for the night, is there any other comments or any additional points that uh, you'd like to make, Tim, or perhaps Scott would like to say something before we leave? Uh, I think I said it already. This is an important project to the county. Um, this is something that wouldn't be possible without the help of DVRPC. Uh, and in general, it, it'll benefit not only a county owned asset in that it's a road and bridge that belongs to the county, but the access to the city of Camden will be greatly benefited by the reduction of flooding, the improvement of a of an existing structure that's in the in need of repair and and the in general improvements to lighting and, and the multi use trail will really give a good look and feel to this area uh, as you come into Camden. Great. Scott, anything on your end? No, nope. thank you, Nicole. Uh, Tim, um, again, we'll see, we'll see what comes in between now and the 31st, and we will post it and respond to the county, and they'll post it on their website at the end of the day. Okay, thank you, Scott. And thank you, Tim, for your presentation. And as well, I'd like to thank everyone who participated tonight, everyone who chimed in on uh, with their comments and feedback, which is very valuable to this project. We appreciate it. And once again, we'd like to encourage everyone, please share the link that you see on your screen or share this video with others who would like to comment or submit questions to the project team. Again, my information is on the screen as well as Tim's, and we will look forward to receiving those comments and feedback through August 31st. So with that said, I'd like to close out our meeting. My name is Nicole Pace Adeo from Stokes Creative Group, and thank you so much for viewing tonight's online public information center meeting for the Kane Avenue Bridge. Have a good evening.